Everybody doing dimensional analysis today. These are mostly practice problems. Again, the purpose of dimensional analysis is to convert from one unit to another. So for example, if we're looking at this first question, the very first thing you want to do is write down your given and then set up your railroad track uh, solving method. So you have how many seconds are in seven days? So we'll start off by writing down seven days. That is what we have been given. Then of course you want to kind of set up your railroad track method here to try and work this all out. So seven days. First I want to be able to try to like cancel out days, right? So down here <clears throat> we have to get all the way down to seconds. So I'll put right here we have one day. And in one day we have 24 hours. And the nice thing about doing that is what we have just done by putting seven days one day and then 24 hours. We're now with hours and we can cancel out days. So our new measurement tool at this time is hours, but we got to keep going because we want to get to seconds. So down here, go down to one hour. So we have one hour. And up here, we want to keep converting closer and closer to seconds. So we'll go to minutes. So we have 60 minutes are in one hour. What have we now done? We have now canceled out hours. <laughs> hours are gone forever. And now we are all the way to minutes. But do we want to end with minutes? No, we absolutely do not. We got to keep going and try to get to seconds. So down here we'll put one minute so we can cancel out minutes. And in one minute there are, of course, 60 seconds. So what have we done there? Now we have canceled out minutes and we are all the way down to seconds. And that's the unit we wanted, right? How many seconds are in seven days? We started with seven days and then you always want to put this unit, whatever unit is on top, you want to put that diagonal to it in order to cancel it out. So we have seven days, we put one day, 24 hours. Hours, one hour, 60 minutes, minutes, 60 minutes, one minute is 60 seconds. So we convert all the way across using our railroad method to get down to seconds. Now how do we solve it from here? Well, it's exactly what it looks like. It's kind of like a fraction. All you do here is you just multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and set yourself up a final fraction. So I take out my handy dandy calculator and I do 7 times 24 times 60 times 60. So on top my final is 604,800. So right here I'd put 604,800. That's the top of my fraction. The bottom 1 times 1 times 1 is of course 1. So I have my fraction set up. And then we have 604 1,800 divided by 1, of course, equals 604,800. And so my final answer, how many seconds are in 7 days? It is 604,800 seconds in 7 days. Sorry, that kind of went down. In 7 days. There you go. Let's leave it like that. Okay. 604,800 seconds are in 7 days. So that's how I solve my problem. Let's go on to our next one. How many inches are in a mile? And you're more than welcome to jump ahead and try to solve these yourself. Now, we always want to start off with our given. So, how many inches are in a mile? We're given, we want to solve for one mile. Right? So that we, we write down our given and then we set up our railroad tracks. Boom. Okay. One mile. So within one mile, we'll cancel that out by writing one mile down here. Within one mile, you may have to look this up. If you need to look this up, that's fine. But you need to know the number of feet because we want to get down to inches, right? So we can go from one mile to feet. And in one mile, there are 5,280 feet. Okay, so we have 5,280 feet in one mile. We have now canceled out miles, and we are one step closer to inches where we want to get. How can we cancel it out further? Well, now we have feet, so we have to put feet down here. You're almost always going to use one down here on the bottom. It's usually most convenient. So we have one foot, and that equals 12 inches. And look at that. It was only three steps, and we are already down two inches. So we do the same thing. We multiply on the top. We multiply on the top equals, and then we set up our fraction. We already know the bottom of our fraction is going to be 1. The top, we have 1 times 5,280, 1 times 5,280 times 12 equals, 
and it's 63,360. So 63,360. 63, so we do 63,360 divided by 1, and we get our final answer of 6,360 inches in one mile. So there's your second example problem of the day. There are 63,360 inches in one mile. Let's do one more example. Going back to time, how many minutes are in one week? So you always start with your given. So we're solving for a week. We're solving for one week. So we start with our given right here, and our given is one week. And then we set up our railroad tracks to start canceling things out. So set that up right there. And then bring this across. There we go. Okay, one week. So we want to cancel that out. We can cancel that out just by putting one week on the bottom. Like I said, one is usually going to be your most common bottom number. One week. And we want to get down to minutes, but let's start off with days. There are seven days in one week. Go down. We want to cancel out. We've canceled out weeks now because diagonal, if they're diagonal, they cancel out. So now we want to try to cancel out days. So we put one day on bottom. One day is 24 hours. 24 hours. So we have now successfully canceled out days. Right there and right there. But we still have more to do. We want to get to minutes. So 24 hours. Let's cancel that out. Let's get my marker back. Okay, on bottom we now have one hour. I don't know why I didn't type this, I wrote it, but that's all right. We have one hour, and one hour is the equivalent to 60 minutes, 60 minutes. Okay, one hour the equivalent to 60 minutes. Are we where we need to be? Yes, we are, because we cancel out hours right here, and we're ending up with minutes. And the original question asked how many minutes are in a week. Everybody see how we got here? We went from one week to seven days, seven days to 24 hours, and then hours down to minutes, and we canceled out things diagonally. So now we set up our fraction at the end. We do 7 times 24 times 60. We get 10,080 on the top. 10,080, and on bottom we have 1 again. So in the end, it's going to end up being 10,080 minutes in one week. So those are three examples of dimensional analysis. Now what you're going to do, now that you've seen these examples and you've practiced just a little bit, you're going to do, I have five more examples on this video, and you are going to do each of those five examples. Now, how this is going to work, you're going to do each of those five examples, and as you finish each example, you are going to you can work with your partner. As you finish each example, you need to write it <clears throat> on a whiteboard, and you need to hold it up so that I can see your solution or you can write it in dry erase marker on your table. Um, but you're going to do each of the five problems. The solutions aren't on this video because I didn't want you to skip ahead and see the solutions immediately. But check with me as you do each one. This is kind of like your guided practice for the day uh, with each of these different practice problems. And so I'll scroll through and you just pause when I get to each question. So here's question one. I'll read it aloud. Then I'll go to the next one so you know when to pause. So um, Levy was meandering down the road one afternoon counting her steps. In total, she counted 2,453 steps. Each step she took was exactly two feet. How many miles did Levy walk? So you're converting from feet. Well, first you have to convert from steps to feet, but that's easiest to do that times that. And then you're con converting from feet to miles. Okay, the next one. Football is often considered a game of inches. In Louisville's best rushing game so far this season, the varsity team ran for exactly 10,406 inches. How many yards did the Fighting Farmers have rushing in that game? So you're converting from inches to yards. Next one. Caleb was riding a roller coaster at Six Flags. It suddenly flew off its rails at the top of its highest peak. Caleb flew down 46,634.4 millimeters to the ground. Luckily, there was a bouncy house, and he ended up being safe and having a great time. So he fell off the coaster, landed on the bouncy house, and, you know, it all worked out. Um, more concerning, though, is what roller coaster was Caleb riding so I can avoid it in the future? How you're going to solve this? You have to convert from millimeters 
to feet. Then you need to find out which roller coaster at Six Flags over Texas is actually that tall at its highest point. And you got to warn everybody not to ride that roller coaster. And you got to tell me what that roller coaster is. And then number four, it has been approximately six and a half years since Mr. Wilson graduated high school. To make me feel even older, how many seconds approximately, I know it's always adding, but using 6.5 years, approximately how many seconds have I been out of high school? And then my last, our last example, uh, each time Zarya and Patrick brick a free throw, and I know they're probably actually really good free throw shooters, but you know, you never know. Um, each time they shoot a free throw, they're shooting the ball about 15 feet. With that in mind, how far is the free throw line from the basket when measured in centimeters? That's the last example. Come up with your solutions. Check with me as you do it. If you struggle, uh, refer to earlier in the video for how you set up the problems. And then we will go through these different examples a little bit later. All right. Good luck. Farewell. Enjoy life.